do you remember when we took our steel wool pads and we dunked them in vinegar to get the coating off and we let the iron in the steel wool react with the oxygen in the environment to form rust? And at the time, we said, well, let's look at what's happening at the atomic level. And at the atom level, we had iron atoms, and they go around individually, and we had oxygen atoms, which like to go around as a pair. And we said, here is what a molecule of rust looks like. And so we rearranged the atoms over here to over here, and we put the oxygen over here, and I don't have enough oxygen to finish this rust molecule. But I can't just suddenly create an oxygen here because we have a rule in chemistry that matter cannot be created or destroyed. It's always the same amount, just changing place. So I might, from the air, bring in a little bit more oxygen, but it's going to be in a pair like this. And I can have it over here. But I still have this loose oxygen over here. And when we're writing a chemical equation, we want to make it balanced. And a balanced chemical equation has the same number of atoms of each type on this side as it has on this side. So we're going to bring in another iron, another rust molecule and add it over to this side. And we can put this oxygen over here, but now we still don't have a good balance because this guy's by himself. So we can think about how many more rust atoms we would need and how many more oxygen atoms we would need to be able to end with an even number where all the atoms from this side get put somewhere new on this side because we don't want to leave any atoms behind as if they've been destroyed. So here we go. By using all of these, we were able to come out even where every atom on this side was accounted for after the change. Let's look at what this looks like when we write it out with symbols. With symbols, we write the chemical reaction of we had the iron, we had the oxygen that goes in pairs, and it becomes the rust molecule. And a rust molecule has two irons and three oxygen atoms. And in order to get it even, we had to start with four iron atoms, and we had to start with three sets of oxygen atoms, and we ended up with two total rust molecules. And we can check that this is balanced using something called a T-chart. And that's what I want to show you today, is how a T-chart can help you make sure that all the atoms that started over here are accounted for after the change. And in a T-chart, you just go through and you say, well, let's see. Iron, over here we had four. Iron, over here we had two groups of two, so that's four. Over here we had oxygen, we had two group, three groups of two oxygen atoms, so that's six. And over here we had two groups of three oxygen atoms, so that's also six. And so we have the same amount here, the same amount here, and we can say the equation is balanced.